Good day students, welcome to module 6 of our course Math 23 EE, Engineering Mathematics for EE. Come basic concepts of PDEs. A partial differential equation is an equation involving one or more partial derivatives of an unknown function, say u, that depends on two or more variables, often time t and one or several variables in space, such as x, y, and z. The order of the highest derivative is called the order of the PDE. A PDE is linear if it is of the first degree in the unknown function u and its partial derivatives. Otherwise, we call it nonlinear. We call a linear PDE homogeneous if each of its terms contains either u or one of its partial derivatives. Otherwise, we call the equation non-homogeneous. These are some of the important second-order PDEs. In these equations, your C is a positive constant, T is time, X, Y, Z are Cartesian coordinates, and dimension is the number of these coordinates in the equation. Notes for important second-order PDEs from the previous slide. All equations are linear. And equation 4 in the previous slide, with f not equal, identically 0, is non-homogeneous, whereas the other equations are homogeneous. Solution of a PDE. A solution of a linear partial differential equation, given, is a function of u of x and y of two independent variables that possess all partial derivatives occurring in the equation and that satisf satisfies the equation in some region of the xy plane. Classification of PDEs The linear second order partial differential equation given where A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are real constants is said to be hyperbolic if B squared minus 4AC is greater than 0 it is parabolic if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 and it is elliptic if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Note that a detailed explanation of why the classifications given are important is not tackled in this module, but these classifications do have a practical importance. Example, classify the following partial differential equations as hyperbolic parabolic or elliptic. We have three equations to be classified. Either it is hyperbolic, parabolic, or elliptic. For solution, for letter A, we rewrite the given equation as this. And then we make the identifications. Your, three, your A is 3, B is 0, and C is 0. Since B squared minus 4A is equal to 0, Therefore, your equation is parabolic. Next, for letter B, we rewrite this equation as, we have this, and then we make the identifications. We have A is equal to 1, B is 0, and your C is negative 1. And since B squared minus 4AC is equal to negative 4 times 1 times negative 1, this is uh, 4, so this is greater than 0. Therefore, your equation is hyperbolic. And last, with given A is 1, your B is 0, and your C is 1, and your B squared minus 4AC is equal to negative 4 times 1 times 1, that is negative 4, which is less than 0, therefore your equation is elliptic. Separation of variables. In this method, we seek to find a particular solution of a linear second order PDE in the form of product of a function x and a function y. So the particular solution of your PDE is u that's equal to your x times your y. With this assumption, it is sometimes possible to reduce a linear PDE in two variables to two ODEs. To this end, we observe that the partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to x prime y. The partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to x y prime. 
the second partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to x double prime y. And the second partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to xy double prime. Where your primes denote ordinary differentiation. Example 2. Find product solutions of the following PDE using separation of variables. From the previous slide, your solution now, substituting u of x comma y is equal to x y to the PDE will yield x double prime y is equal to 4 x y prime. Separating the variables, we now have x double prime over 4 x is equal to y prime over y. Each side of the previous equation must be a constant. We write this real separation constant as negative lambda. From the two equalities, we have x double prime over 4x is equal to y prime over y is equal to negative lambda. We then obtain the two linear ordinary differential equations. We have x double prime plus 4 lambda x is equal to 0 and y prime plus lambda y is equal to 0. Take note of the text in red. This is correction to your module. For the three cases of lambda, 0, negative, or positive, that is lambda is equal to 0, lambda is equal to negative alpha squared, and lambda is equal to alpha squared, where your alpha is greater than 0. The ODEs in equation 2 are, we have for the 0, that's x double prime is equal to 0, and y prime is equal to 0. Then for the negative case, we have x double prime, minus 4 alpha squared x is equal to 0 and y prime minus alpha squared y is equal to 0 and for the positive case that is x double prime plus 4 alpha squared x is equal to 0 and y prime plus alpha squared y is equal to 0. For case number 1, we have your lambda is equal to 0. The d is in equation 3 can be solved by integration. The solutions are x is equal to c sub 1 plus c sub 2x and y is equal to c sub 3. Thus, a particular product solution of the given PDE is u is equal to xy that's equal to c sub 1 plus c sub 2x times c3. Or, we have u is equal to a sub 1 plus b sub 1x where your a sub 1 is c sub 1 times c sub 3 and your b sub 1 is c sub 2 times c sub 3. For case number 2, we have your alpha is equal to negative alpha squared. The general solution of the d is, in equation 4, r x is equal to c sub 4 cos 2 alpha x plus c5 sinh 2 alpha x and y is equal to c sub 6 e raised to alpha squared y. Thus, another particular product solution of the PDE is u is equal to xy is equal to the quantity c sub 4 cos 2 alpha x plus c sub 5 sinh 2 alpha x times c sub 6 e raised to alpha squared y or we have is equal to a sub 2 e raised to alpha squared y cos 2 alpha x plus b sub 2 e raised to alpha squared y times sinh 2 alpha x where your a sub 2 is equal to c sub 4 c sub 6 and b sub 2 is equal to c sub 5 c sub 6 for case number 3 your lambda is equal to alpha squared finally the general solutions of the d is in equation number 5 are x is equal to c sub 7 cosine 2 alpha x plus c sub 8 sine 2 alpha x and y is equal to c sub 9 e raised to negative alpha squared y. These results give yet another particular solution. u is equal to xy that's equal to the quantity c sub 7 cosine 2 alpha x plus c sub 8 sine 2 alpha x times c sub 9 e raised to negative alpha squared y. Or we have u is equal to a sub 3 e raised to negative alpha squared y cosine 2 alpha x plus b sub 3 e raised to negative alpha squared y times sine 2 ax. Where your a sub 3 is c sub 7, c sub 9 
and your b sub 3 is c sub 8, c sub 9. Make note that separation of variables is not a general method for finding particular solutions of linear partial differential equations since some equations are simply not separable. Superposition principle, if u sub 1, u sub 2, up to u sub k are solutions of the homogeneous linear PDE, then the linear combination u is equal to c sub 1, u sub 1, plus c sub 2, u sub 2, up to c sub k, u sub k, where your c sub i is i is equal to 1, 2, and up to k, our constants, is also a solution. We shall assume whenever we have a, an infinite set, u sub 1, u sub 2, up to u sub k of solutions of a homogeneous linear equation, we can construct yet another solution u by forming the infinite series, u is equal to the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of c sub k, u sub k. Where your c sub k and your k is equal to 1, 2, and so on are constants.